Father, thank you for your presence with us as we gather. We pray that we as a whole church would encounter you by your spirit in this time of worship. Amen. gather together on this Remembrance Sunday. Today we remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. Here we commit ourselves to work for reconciliation between the nations, cultures and religions, that all people may, together, live in freedom, justice and peace.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. Ever living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the presence of your peace. May the same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Today we worship together, just a few days into a new lockdown. We hold before God our anxieties and concerns, as well as the needs of our local community at this time. We also think of all those who have died as a result of war and violence. So come, let us turn to God, who is with us in all our sorrows, who weeps with us when, as we weep, who binds our wounds, who inspires our hope, and who lifts our eyes towards the eternal horizon. God is with us now and always. Let us turn to God and be people of love, hope and trust, today and always. In this time of prayer, we meet in the presence of God. We commit ourselves to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations, that all people may, together, live in freedom, justice and peace. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. Let us pray together. God of consolation, in all the stories of our lives, you are with us. As we turn to each other and turn to you, may we give and find all the comfort that we need, knowing that it is in such shelter that we hear the echoes of your great kindness. Amen. Every Christian is meant to be a lamp carrier, a bearer of the light of Christ to a darkened world. But like the foolish bridesmaids we read about in today's Gospel, we sometimes allow the precious light of Christ in us to grow dim, or even to go out altogether. Through a spirit of prayer and watchfulness, Christ will help us to keep his light burning brightly. Lord Jesus, you call us to keep the lamp of faith burning brightly. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to keep the lamp of hope burning brightly. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You call us to keep the lamp of love burning brightly. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. 
forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God, your, your wisdom, wisdom draws, draws us in. in. It, it is, is the bright sun in the morning and the soft moon of night. Your wisdom is the dawn and the dusk, the kind opening and gentle closing. We praise you for all your wisdom gives, strength for continuation, hope for consolation, courage for perseverance, joy for the journey, and love for all time. Amen. Let us pray. God, our refuge and strength. Bring near the day when wars shall cease and poverty and pain shall end. That earth may know the peace of heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prophet warns those who seek the day of the Lord, because it is a day of darkness, not of light. God is tired of the people's festivals and offerings, and looks instead for justice and righteousness. A reading from the prophet Amos. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion, only to meet a bear. As though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall, only to have a snake bite him. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light? Pitch dark without a ray of brightness. I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stench to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps. But let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. A reading from St Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Stay awake and stand ready, because you do not know the hour when the Son of Man is coming. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke this parable to the disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps 
and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out and meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. We thank you, Father, for these wonderful words from the Scriptures. And we pray that you would inspire us with hope. In the name of your Son, Jesus, and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 In 2014, to commemorate 100 years since the start of the First World War, Sainsbury's put together a Christmas advert which told the story of soldiers who exchanged presents such as chocolate with those who they perceived as their enemy. Soldiers who sang Silent Night, different languages, and played football with each other to celebrate. These soldiers recognised that even global war and life in the trenches could not stop Christmas. Whatever we think about war and conflict, we can be inspired by those who have died in wars and conflicts about living for something bigger than ourselves. They gave up their lives with the vision of a better world. Pointing us to Jesus, who endured the pain of the cross for the joy was set before him. The reading from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians is a call to hope. Hope has been helpfully defined using an acronym as hold (coughs) onto promises every day. I want to repeat that uh, at home or wherever you are. Hold on to promises every day. We have such amazing promises to hold on to. Paul says to the church in Thessalonica that as Christians we will not necessarily be spared from suffering, but that death is not the final word. Death never has the final say. Light shines in the darkness. The darkness cannot overcome. The darkness cannot extinguish the light of Christ. Paul urges Christians in Thessalonica not to grieve 
as those who are hopeless. It's not grieving that Paul is condemning, but it's grieving without hope. Weeping, mourning, lamentation and grieving can be healthy when it involves holding on to the promises of God. The promises that Paul reminds the Thessalonians of is that Jesus has died. And Jesus has risen. The empty tomb and the physical appearances of Jesus after his death are historical evidence of this. In the Gospel reading, there was reference to the Kingdom of Heaven. The Kingdom of Heaven is breaking into our earthly reality as we see God transform our lives and the world around us. The Kingdom of Heaven will come in fullness when Jesus returns, making all things new. We will live with God forever. If those aren't enough promises for you, (laughs) in the reading from the prophet Amos describes a beautiful reality, justice and righteousness tumbling down from the heavens. This is an upcoming reality, a hope that can wake us from our drowsiness. Often we can be like those people who had the lamps but were feeling sleepy, weary and drowsy. I think God would say, wake up, wake up, hold on to promises every day. Last Sunday I was licensed as missional priest for the parish of Dalton and up Holland. And I want to say a big thank you to all those who were involved in that service, including those of you who were praying at home for that service. Why have we appointed a missional priest? Well, central to my role is encouraging us to share hope with those around us. and to build new communities of hope. I'm really excited about that. The Apostle Peter talked about being prepared to give a reason for the hope that is in us. This week, I'd really encourage you to take some time to consider the reason for the hope that is in you. How did you come to be part of the church? How did you start following Jesus? This doesn't need to be long or complicated. You might like to think about three words that describe your life before you are a Christian. And three words that describe your life since you became a Christian, since you joined the church. Don't worry about making it full of academic wisdom. It's best for it to be as simple as it can be, so that other people can hear and understand. For me, when I was born, both my parents were atheists. A lot of questions about faith as a child. And this was one of the things that prompted my mum to go on the Alpha course church in the village where I grew up. 
we began to explore faith together. Her as an adult and me as a child. And then I was baptised at the age of about 16. I discovered some answers to, to my questions over the years. When I was about 11 at a festival called Spring Harvest, it was clearly explained that Jesus died and rose again. And I remember hearing that for the first time. Understanding that this was what I already believed. And then at the age of 16, as things became increasingly clear for me, I decided to take a further step and be baptised. Forward to sharing more about that story. But one of the most important things over the past 10 years has been discovering that God loves me. He loves each of us as his children. And that for me has been a wonderful and joyful experience to know that that is my identity, that I am loved by God. I encourage you to think about your own journey of faith. And if it helps you, you might even want to write that down. If you'd like to share that with me, feel free to get in touch. I'd love to hear your stories of faith. Let's invite the light of Christ to shine through us. Particularly as we approach Christmas. Let's remember that like the soldiers who didn't let global war or life in the trenches lead them to believe that Christmas could be stopped. Let us follow their example by remembering that Jesus has come. His light came into the world. Father, we invite your Holy Spirit to breathe afresh among us. We pray that we will be those who display the light of hope through our words, through our actions. Let's take a moment to wait for the Spirit of God to invite his still, small whisper his voice of calm speaks to us. Help us to understand and articulate clearly our stories and journeys of faith. Be prepared to present a reason for the hope that we have. May that we are be those who would know that we are totally loved by you. More loved by you than we could ever possibly understand. Would we be those who tell others that they are loved by Jesus? Pray that over this coming season of Advent and Christmas, we would see people starting to follow Jesus as his disciples, as we point others through our witness to him. Amen. Take together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one 
God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of light and love, be with all during this lockdown. Help us to remain strong and resolute, knowing that you are always with us to guide, encourage and strengthen. Bless those who risk their lives to help others and all who work in the NHS and medical profession. Guide all who lead and govern. Give grace to those who are alone, anxious or afraid at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of light and love, we ask your blessing upon the church throughout the world. We pray especially for areas where faith has grown dim and vision has been lost. We remember all who are struggling against dark and evil forces. We pray for all who seek to bring the light of Christ to others. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of light and love, strengthen all who are on their guard against evil and seek to bring peace and harmony to our world. We remember before you all who are suffering through oppression or violence, all who are used as cheap labour, and all who are without proper homes or enough food. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of light and love, make us alert to your presence with us and in our homes. Bless and protect our families and friends. Make us alert to the needs of those around us, especially in these challenging times. Help us not to miss opportunities for showing and sharing your love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of light and love, bless all whose lives are darkened by illness or tragedy. We remember all who feel afraid and those who regret work undone or doing what they should not have done. We pray for all who are ill and in any kind of need. Hear us, Lord, and pray for those who we are concerned for. We also pray for those who still carry the physical and mental scars of war and violence in their bodies and minds. 
Lord, in your mercy. Lord of light and love, we ask your blessing upon all our friends and loved ones who are departed from us. We pray for all who have died as a result of war or violence. May they rejoice in the light and love and enjoy eternal life in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. In the midst of turmoil and change, God brings peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We pray for a few moments that God's peace may come to every part of the world. To you we come. Father of lights, with angels and saints, where heaven and earth unite. May Jesus meet us in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. With you. <coughs> Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should always sing of your glory. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, for you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is to come. Your love, made visible in Jesus Christ, brings home the lost, restores the sinner, and gives dignity to the despised. In his face, your light shines out, flooding life with goodness and truth, gathering into one in your kingdom a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with all who can give voice in your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, 
Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Lord of all life, help us to work for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. with disciples of Jesus in the Diocese of Liverpool and across the world, as Jesus, the Prince of Peace, has taught us. So we pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, they will live forever. Lord, Lord give, give us, us this bread always.
God of peace, whose Son, Jesus Christ, proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to wholeness of life. Look with compassion on the anguish of the world, and by your healing power, make whole both people and nations, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God, whose ever-loving presence brings unending spiritual blessings and strength to move forward in a changing world, Grant spiritual food for the journey and courage to lead the way. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks to be